Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year. This is the first video in 2024, and I want to apologize for my absence. The first five trading days of any market year are important, but in 2024, could this be the biggest start moving forward? Welcome back to The Daily Show, where we discuss stocks, commodities, and cryptos together. Earnings season is only a week away, meaning volatility is re-entering the market. It looks like yields are coming back up, and of course, everybody's starting to get concerned. So, was 2023 the calm before the storm? Today we take a look at the key levels for both the US 500 major indices and of course the biggest stock in the world, which is Apple. Where are the bulls and where are the bears right now? That, along with our thoughts on the MAG7 moving forward and the biggest stats that might blow your mind, is coming up in today's episode. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show. My name is K2, and today we're discussing a lot of macro and lead indicators, including some data that might blow your mind. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button if you enjoy anything to do with markets, just like we do here. Summary of U.S. December Jobs Report The labor market remains resilient despite higher Fed interest rates. December saw the addition of $216,000 jobs, surpassing expectations of 170 hours. The U.S. unemployment rate held steady at 3.7%, the lowest since July, defying expectations of an increase to 3.8%. Wage growth accelerated, rising at a 4.1% pace, marking the first increase in months. Instant reaction. Stock futures fell. U.S. dollar jumped. Bond yields rose. Key takeaway. The December non-farm payrolls report suggests that the labor market is holding up better than anticipated. The robust data might lead markets to revise expectations for the first rate cut from the first half of 2024 to late 2024. It seems like market players are starting to realize that they took the Fed rate cut party a little too far at the end of last year. The odds that the Fed will leave rates unchanged in March are at 34% currently. Just a little over a week ago, it was 13%. It points to some unwinding of the aggressive rate cut bets by traders in recent weeks, and if that continues, it looks like there may be more pain to come for risk trades. What will the Fed do now? What happens if THD Fed cuts rates and CPI inflation rises back towards plus or 10%? According to some projections, multiple Fed rate cuts in 2024 could potentially unleash another inflationary storm in 2025. That's one policy error the Fed doesn't want to make. Despite the rough start to the new year, the fear and greed index is still firmly in greed territory. For the S&P 500, this is the worst start to a year since it began 2015 with a three-session skid. Very important data was reported today on the ISM services. The employment index plunged to levels only seen during recessionary periods. Despite the better-than-expected job numbers today, there has never been a time that the unemployment rate crossed its two-year moving average and a recession didn't follow. Keep in mind that the more labor markets deteriorate, the more favorable it is for hard assets. S&P 500, SPY, Weekly Performance Heat Map, Uber, 818%, AMD, 6.8%, Appel, 6.4%, Tesla, 6.2%, Nike, 6.2%, Amazon, 5.3%, Netflix, 3.4%, Google, 2.8%, Microsoft, 2% Meta, 1.8%, Wall Street Weekly Performance. Dow, ends down. 0.6%, snapping a nine-week winning streak. S&P 500, ends down, 1.5%, experiencing its first weekly loss in 10 weeks. NASDAQ, ends down, 3.2%, snapping a nine-week winning streak. Russell 2000, ends down, 4%. Mark Zuckerberg sold $428 million of Meta stock in the last two months of 2023. New filings show that Zuckerberg sold shares on every trading day between November 4th and December 31st of 2023. Does he know something? Surprising link between unemployment and recessions. Low unemployment rate is traditionally a sign of a strong economy. Janet Yellen reminded us of this recently. You don't have a recession when you have 500,000 jobs and the lowest unemployment rate in more than 50 years. But, as the chart below shows, Unemployment often reaches a cyclical low point right before a recession materializes. Something to think about. Let's break down the analysis for the SPY, 
S&P 500 ETF 4-Hour Chart Support Level 466 is identified as a good support level. If the price reaches this level, it could present a buying opportunity. Trend Line As long as the trend line holds, there's potential for the market to move higher. The trend line is a crucial factor in determining the overall direction of the market. Potential Upside If the conditions mentioned above are met, the analysis suggests that the market has the potential to reach 470. Breakout Scenario Breaking above 470 could signal further upward movement, with the next target identified at 473. Let's analyze the QQQ, Invesco QQQ Trust, 4-hour chart support level. The support at 395 has held, indicating a bullish scenario. If the price remains above this level, it suggests a positive outlook. Bullish case. To confirm a bullish case, the price needs to go above 400. If this happens, the next target is identified at 404. This implies potential upward momentum. Bearish case. If the price falls below 395, it signals a bearish scenario. In this case, the next targets are set at 393 and 390, suggesting a potential downward trend. Analyzing the Tesla TSLA 4-hour chart, wedge pattern break. The wedge pattern has been broken, indicating a potential change in the price trend. Bearish scenario. If a significant sell-off is expected, the next support level to watch is at 226. Further downside. In the event that the support at 226 does not hold, the next target for potential downside movement is identified at 212. Analyzing the Apple, AAPL, 4-hour chart, aggressive sell-off. Apple has experienced an aggressive sell-off recently. Bearish scenario. If the downward trend continues, the next support level to monitor is at 173. Potential reversal. On the other hand, if the price manages to rise above 182.45, it suggests a potential reversal and there might be a gap fill opportunity. And let's wrap up the video with the earnings, news, and key events we have this week. If you guys want to screenshot the picture and use it for the next week, please do. This week, all the earnings kick off with the banks. So last but not least, for the end of this video, we have some important key events this week, such as CPI and PPI, to keep in mind. It could be volatile in the market. If you liked the video, please remember to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, please write them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later.